Our keynote speaker for today is the Honorable Vernon White, Senator from Canada's Parliament. Canadian Prime Minister Stephen Harper appointed Vern White to the Senate on January 6, 2012. At the time of his appointment, he was serving as Ottawa's police chief. Before that, as police chief in Durham. However, the major portion of Senator White's law enforcement career was served with the RCMP. He retired at the rank of assistant commissioner after 24 years of service. Senator White has extensive experience in all avenues of policing, from administration to operations. His passion lies in building academic-based bridges between the police and those less fortunate in life. Senator White. Watching Henry and Pete up here was a bit like watching the movie Twins with Arnold and Danny DeVito, actually. And I was wondering, for those who are hockey fans, uh, whether or not that's why I couldn't get in today after last week the Ottawa Senators kicked the crap out of the Montreal Canadiens. But uh, apparently that wasn't the issue. I have uh, worked in policing for the past 31 years, and it has given me a, a bit of a perspective on lawmakers and law enforcers that not everyone has. First and foremost, they have no idea what each, each other does and really don't understand what the expectations are of each. Lawmakers are focused on a few key things. What do their electorate want? Will they be reelected if they give them what they want? What can they do in the short time they're in power, typically four years? And how can they make a difference based on the platform that got them elected? Law enforcers, on the other hand, leadership in particular, are focused on a few other things. What are the issues in their jurisdiction, their communities, their cities? What can they do to impact on those issues and those problems, fight crime typically? And how do they influence legislators to give them the tools they need to do that? Now you would think these two groups could focus on common goals and themes, and at times they do. At times they're successful. But let's look instead at what, where we are today when it comes to Canadian integrated ballistics and fighting gun crime in Canada, as an example. 2004, there was an agreement in principle to move toward a shared database, or at least sharing information between Canada and America, the Sybin and Nibin systems, formalized in 2006, and it was a very positive move. But let's look at where Canada is and realistically when it comes to actually maintaining our own system. Because really, we're not running a truly collaborative network yet. Everyone has access in one way or another. So we can enter evidence, but do we really do that? No, we're entering evidence in a catch-as-catch-can, random process. Truth is, many jurisdictions, the best place to dump a crime gun is at a police amnesty program. As the guns received are not crime guns, and as a result, may not meet requirements for testing and data entry. Had we started our fingerprint bureau in the same manner, we would have a very challenging fingerprint system in Canada. Instead, we have one of the best in the world, one that maintains 3.5 million criminal fingerprint sets and 35 million crime scene or latent prints. Think if we were able to do the same thing from a crime gun perspective. So how do we get from here on investigating gun crime to there? First and foremost, we have to educate policymakers, legislators, government officials, bureaucrats, on the realities of what we need to fight gun crime in Canada, on what's really out there, how we gather intelligence, how we gather information, how we enter evidence. We have to get, educate police leaders and their agencies on why it's important and how they can interact with, educator, or with uh, legislators in their communities to make sure they understand that if we want to make fighting gun crime a national priority. We have to educate the public on why it's important. It's not about law-abiding gun owners, it's about fighting gun crime. 
about arresting those involved in gun crime. We have to assist governments in identifying the funding needed to ensure a cyber system, Canada's perspective, is relevant and appropriate for fighting gun crime in Canada today. What it takes to actually investigate a gun crime in the first place. Where it will take us and what impact we can have. We have to assist each jurisdiction, whether it's municipal, provincial or federal, on collaborative policies and rules regarding the collection of relevant data for entry into the system. How we do that, what we seize, when we test and when we enter. And we have to ensure we have the ability to share data across jurisdictions, not just between our international partners, and in particular Canada and US. So influencing public policy must include sharing information in the case of gun crime. We've developed a basic system to combat gun crime in Canada. Now we have to ensure we've educated those in power so they understand the issues we as police officers across this country are facing. The truth is most people, most legislators, think they know how this works. They've seen CSI. It seems simple, seize a piece of evidence, enter it into IBIS, the case of CSI, and you have all the information you need to make an arrest within minutes. How hard could this be? The backbone, the reality, the database required to do what you see on that TV show needs to be identified to legislators. The truth is CSI couldn't be further from reality in Canada. But I think if we work collaboratively across lines between policing and elected officials, we can educate them so they can make that scenario or something similar a reality. We need to actually get out and explain to Canadians, explain to those that we've elected how this works. What it takes to build a strong, vibrant system to fight gun crime in Canada. As police officers, those of you who are officers in here, we have something going for us. The public trusts us, inherently actually. Might be one of the few public official positions that the public first and foremost have faith and trust in. They trust very little else from the public perspective. When the police say we had a homicide last night, three people are dead, and we're searching for two suspects, community members lock their doors for a reason, because they believe us. There are very few public institutions in our countries that have the support of the police that we have. But they only trust us as long as they understand us. And they only trust us as long as the systems we've identified that are necessary actually work. And right now in Canada, we have a system that isn't quite working yet. I speak to officials in Toronto and Calgary in particular who have taken some things into their own hands about a system that needs to work. The first complaint they have is about what's in the system already, not what they're putting against the system. We have to build a strong backbone, just as we did 30 years ago with our fingerprint backbone, to ensure when we seize evidence, we actually have the ability to solve crime, make arrests, and put people in jail. In Canada, you see, they buy into something called one of Peelian principles. The public believes they are part of the police, as the police, they believe they are part of the public. The reality for us in policing, and now in my case, in government, is that we know what the right thing is, we no longer have a choice but to do it. So in Canada, I believe we're actually on the cusp of doing the right thing. I think police services, police officials, senior police leaders understand for the first time the importance of a system that delivers across this country a data bank that allows us to access and run evidence against so that we can actually solve crime, remove guns from the streets, and arrest those involved. And more than any other time, as we're seeing violent crime go down, we are seeing more guns on our streets. I think it comes down to us educating those around us, and often they're people that I work with today, not those that I worked with before. Thank you very much for being here, and I appreciate it, and welcome to Canada for those who are outside the country. Thank you.